Hi, right, everybody. Welcome in. This is Stick and Hack on Air, and this is Stick and Hack Reacts. I'm Adam Grubb, uh, freshly tanned Adam Grubb, and Keith Stewart from ESPN Radio and host of the Pro Show, as well as Read the Line with me here, as always, Monday lunchtime, for the reactions of the weekend. And uh, there was a lot to react to, Keith. First of all, uh, good to see you. I hope you had a great vacation, as did I. Uh, let's get, move past the pleasantries and right into the content. J.J. Spawn, my man, ranked 199th in the world and he is now going to the Masters this weekend. Why? Because he won the Valero Texas Open. First ever winner, a first time winner. Again, we had a first time winner, Keith. JJ Spawn held off uh, Matt, Kut Matt Kuchar and some others. He's going to the Masters because he won over the weekend. Tell me your reaction to JJ Spawn, Valero Texas Open. You got to give my man JJ Spawn two thumbs up. Now, the lead-in commentary on the Valero Texas Open last week that I wrote about was that five of the last six years, the event before the Masters, somebody needed to win to get into the Masters. Mm -hmm. And five of the last six years, they did that. The only guy who didn't was Jordan, who won last year. Okay, So he makes six out of seven that somebody comes from nowhere, Okay, over 200th, ranked over 200th in the world. 199, sir. 199. Hey, now he's down to 103. <laughs> and you know what? He's really number 92 because he's number 92 in the field at Augusta National for the Masters. Um, you know, final round 69, open with a double bogey. How about this, my friend, my quick-witted friend this afternoon? All right. Last guy to make a double bogey to start his round and win on the PGA Tour None other than Tiger Woods in the 2008 U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. How about that, my friend? Wow. <laughs> Take that to the Golden Corral buffet. Okay? I will indeed, today. sir. That's I what I'm indeed. saying. It, it's Masters week, and we're talking about Tiger, so you know I'm fired up. I do. I do. And, you know, here's here's what I think is is so cool. So J.J. Spawn, he gets his first victory ever. And he's a, a early 30s. He's been playing 15 years. He's been on the tour for 12. He's gone through the, you know, he's one of those journeymen. You never hear his name. You never hear his name. 147 starts. 147 starts. Yeah. And the start that changes his life in more ways than one is at the Valero Texas Open. And San no, Antonio, up. San Antonio, sir. Yeah. And he wins, and now he goes, and and he's and he's calling his family. He's like, "Hey, bad news about this weekend's birthday party. I'm not going to be there. Hopefully, unless it's, <laughs> if it's Thursday or Friday, I won't be there. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't be there on Saturday, um, because he's going to Augusta. What a thrilling, thrilling 24 hours for that guy. And he, 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 he didn't come out of nowhere this weekend, but he was not favored and he was not in that conversation early uh, yesterday morning. His odds were slightly high. He was 210 to one to win. So, I mean, he... Where was that on Read the Line, right. Keith? Where was JJ Spun? Give hey, my boy some credit early. A couple of my buddies touted him. And I mean, I give him all the credit in the world. I don't know if I read that far down the list most times. I mean, come on, 210 to one? Give me a break. Not yeah. only that... He's the ninth first-time winner this year. There's only been 24 events, okay? Mm. He's probably the only guy who's not complaining about the price of gas. Winning the Valero. Only I mean, been 24 on. events. It's eight, It's April. Only been 24 <laughs> events. I got Every <laughs> week, I got I to gotta have that. 24. In. You got to get that God. in there. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on uh, to the LPGA. And uh, the first major of the year was this past weekend. Now, that is important to know because the Chevron Championship – which is the second uh, of the oil and gas uh, f fiasco that was this weekend. Uh, the Chevron Championship, the LPGA. Jennifer Cupcho, your winner of the first major of the year and the major for the LPGA. Uh, congratulations to Jessica. I can assume two thumbs up on that. All good, all positive. Is there anything you could find negative about the past weekend with that? Maybe her back nine. At one point today, this evening, she had a seven-shot like lead. She had a seven-shot lead. She made on the back nine today, I, I think she made uh, five bogeys. She made yeah. five bogeys on her back nine. So leaking a little oil. Sorry, we got to run with this, right? She was leaking a little oil on the way in, but yeah. she pulled it off. She won by two over Jessica Corda. Um, last time they're going to play at Mission Hills, 
There were a lot of tears and everything, you know. So let me let me ask you that. That was that was my question. So yesterday when okay. they 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 uh, finished up and and all weekend I'm hearing, hey, last time that they're going to be playing at Mission Hills. This is uh, so sad for golf and and, and blah. why? Why is there is there a story behind it, or did their contract run up, or did someone not book the weekend next year, or what what happened? There's another wedding. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, uh, it, it's actually it, you know they kept using the word bittersweet. And, you know, it's kind of like our relationship. There's, like the, you know, you got to take the good with the bad, my friend. You know, you, you, you deal with what you can. Chevron came in and paid an exorbitant amount of money to sponsor this major. With one caveat. We want to move it to where our world headquarters is in Houston. Mm. And, you know, the LPGA, that's, that's a, I mean, that's just a huge what, thing. Yeah, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? They have to do it. Because... Right. I mean, it's a major championship. It brings on television coverage. It brings on all the things that we complain about all the time that they need. And these are the types of give and take decisions that they have to make. So, you know, my reaction on Jen Cupcho, meh. I would like to see her seal the deal, win by five, and stomp on some necks. But she didn't. She did win, though. My reaction on this deal is meh. I feel bad. I really enjoy the Dinosaur Tournament course there. It has a lot of fun. The back nine, it's got some creative holes. It's got the 18th hole, the jump in the pond. Everybody loves those traditions, but what they're going to have available to them with with the Chevron being the lead sponsor and moving over to Houston, and maybe it moves around a little bit, I think that's also kind of cool, and it's great for the women's game. So I, I go back and forth on that, but that's the reasoning why. Well, I think what it, what is is telling here is that there is now money that is starting to shuffle into the LPGA. Oh, and that's time. great. And that's great news for yeah. everybody. And when a sponsor, I mean, you know, here at Stick and Hack, if we got five dollars, uh, I would bend over backwards. I'd do the show, you know, from a bathroom at a, at a truck stop if necessary. Right? Yeah. Um, there is when you have. <laughs> wait, 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 time out, time out. <laughs> I would. I would still do the show right here. Right. To, okay. I, well, that's what's beautiful about this. For the fans, for the fans, I have to. I have to have some standards. All right, All right keep fine. going. You're rolling. Thank you. I, I was. Yeah. I was. Uh, so money is now flowing in the LPGA. They had no choice. So really, the tears and the and the bittersweetness is just about the the history of that course, and that's where that that uh, tournament has been year after year. But at the end of the day, this is the right move for the LPGA, and this is the right move for the for the ladies. Correct. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if it were Augusta National, so be it. You know, like, and you had an unlimited checkbook, then stay at Mission Hills Country Club. But it's not. And right. they need to grow. And they are really, I mean, you just look at the talented people like a Jennifer Cup show. That's the second year in a row that the player who wins a major at this site, it's their first win on tour. I mean, that tells you something about the young ladies coming up. And you want to talk about parallels and cool stories for this weekend. There have been three winners of the Augusta National Women's Amateur. The first winner is also your Chevron Championship winner. Jennifer Cupcho won the inaugural Augusta National Women's Amateur, and they hosted it again this weekend, and you have a new winner in Anna Davis. I mean, all sorts of cool things, again, going on in golf. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'll reiterate your point. It's like every week you and I come out on Monday, and there's always something to react to, and it's always pretty cool stuff. Um, it unless it's Bryson or Greg Norman, so it's it's we're, we're living large. Um, so there's a, a spoiler alert there. Uh, number three reaction is the Anwa, and that's the Augusta National Women's Amateur, and the winner Anna Davis, who is a staggering 16 years old. Now at 16, Keith, I was playing golf, but okay. I was playing golf for Oak Hill High School, and I was firing a 43, and I was meddling. OK, that's where I was at 16 with my golf game. And I haven't gotten any better since. Nonetheless, this is a phenom. And you can use that word in every sense of, 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 of its meaning, because Anna Davis came out and played and, and just for, for the fans and for the listeners and quite frankly, for me, the history of the Anwa is different and unique. It's only been around for a few years. They got uh, they got things moved out because of COVID. They had this little break, and and people were concerned that it wasn't going to have the same allure that it had the, in its first year. That is not the case. This thing had ESPN coverage. This thing had uh, a, a really a, a palpable excitement in the air about it. Tell me why and explain it to me. Well, you know what? You bring up a really good point there. The way you kind of did that lead-in and you built it up, 
Think about what the Chevron was competing against this weekend and why the LPGA has to do that. Their first major was on this weekend. Augusta mm -hmm. National, the Masters is where it is. And they put this ladies event there. And they're two competitive events. But Augusta National can do whatever they want with TV coverage, right? And the, and the LPGA, they needed Chevron to come in. So, I mean, I think all this stuff kind of comes together in a very unique way. And maybe with Chevron and it going to Houston, maybe it moves off a week and then, you know... So we let me can shine make, a light on both sides of the thing. So let me make sure I understand this. And and it's it's Monday lunchtime. I'm still a little groggy from vacation, so forgive me. Okay. But there was I remember there being some controversy over the weekend of some of the LPGA players who were upset and or frustrated and vocal about the fact that this tournament, the Anwa, was on the same weekend as the LPGA first major, leading into the Masters, and they felt that their coverage was being squashed a little bit because of this, because Augusta was saying, hey, look at this amazing tournament we have that's right before this of the women's amateur. This is us in, and in, 20, in 2022 uh, showcasing our love for diversity in golf uh, for the first time in 80 years. Where where does that line draw of, hey, we're upset that we don't get the coverage, and but we can't be that upset because they're showcasing women in golf? What's the story? Well, I mean, one of the, the basic problems was that the Chevron used to invite amateurs, high-level amateur ladies, to come play. And now they're going to get an invitation from Augusta National and from the Chevron. So... Uh, four years ago when it started, we skipped a year, but this was the third edition, right? They, you know, now the Chevron was losing all the great women amateur players because they're like, well, I'm going to Augusta National, of course, right? right? Who wouldn't, right? So so the whole thing being on the same weekend is a super thumbs down. Hopefully with Chevron, hopefully things will shift a little bit. We know the Masters isn't going to move from when it is. And they've turned what was once four days of just absolutely fantastic theater into now what, four and then another uh, three for the ladies and drive, chip, and putt, another four, eight days? How about that quick math, you know? Yeah, and very good. It, it's one of those things where I, I think that Augusta National is trying to create this rite of passage in spring for men's, women's, junior golf, all this stuff, and it's just going to be there. And I think the rest of the world needs to kind of evolve and move around them because they're Augusta National. Um, it, it's not starting out the best way, but I think it'll work its way within, you know, the next year or two into a really great schedule. And, you know, at, at this point it is what it is. It's Augusta national and they're going to well, do what they want, yeah. but it's all good for golf. It is good for golf and it's good for those amateurs. Anna Davis, who who's getting overshadowed here by the politics of the whole thing. She's 16 damn years old. And she just went out and won and won this tournament. And, and she, she, and she was, won it left-handed. She did. She did. Uh, some sort of some sort of dare she had uh, yeah. ahead of time from a buddy of hers said, "Hey, why don't you play the thing left hand and see what happens?" Yeah, and she uh, got she, a free bowl of soup with that hat. <laughs> goes out and wins, uh, and and she's one of the one of these stars that you know we're going to see in 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 years to come, and I think probably quicker than we think uh, we're going to see her name, and she might be playing the Chevron here in in a few years herself. Well, I mean, look what happened with Jen Cupcho. She won exactly. the Anwa. And then she won the oh, no. I, 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 That's why I was bringing it back, Keith. I heard you earlier. I did, I was bringing it back. I was illuminating your point, sir. Yeah. I heard the whole thing. You listened to me? I did. Because oh. I, I was fascinated by it. Because you brought some facts on Monday that I didn't know. And I and that's and that's what you do. And that's right. why I know I know there's one more trans transition that you're dying to make. I can't wait. I don't know why. I, I mean, my God. Because it's the story of the week. But I'm gonna right. I'm gonna give it to you right now. All right. One of the most famous shots in Masters history was in 2005. Right. Okay. The guy who won that day wears a red shirt. He does. On the 16th hole, he did what? He he chipped in uh, okay. on the 16th hole of the Masters. I remember where I was when I saw that uh, exact exact chip. Uh, you know, he's he's picking out a landing spot. Vern said. Yeah. You know who wasn't who doesn't know where she was on that day? Uh, Anna Davis. She wasn't, she, was. she wasn't alive. She wasn't alive. She wasn't alive. Imagine it's Masters Week. They're gonna show that chip like a hundred times. <laughs> oh my god! It's like it's like when me, me watching. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Jack went in the '60s or '70s. I, I don't remember any of that. I wasn't yeah. around for that. Yeah, right? I, I love talking about Muhammad Ali fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sonny no Liston. Idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's let's talk about Newt Rockney while we're at it. Yeah. Uh, all right, Keith. Can I transition into the news of the week? 
Okay, yeah, we are. I mean, I, I mean we're, honestly, I didn't I set you up there. Did we're, I see seven, it up? we're seventy-two hours or something. Eighty hours doesn't matter. My math isn't as as, as quick as yours, Keith. Uh, from uh, from April, and and that means Augusta, and that means what's wrong? The Masters, right? Yeah. Haven't you ever seen those shirts? Is it in April yet? That's that's the that's what that was. Have you seen the shirt I wore for you? Yeah, exactly. It's from last year. I, I get it. I don't know why we're fighting, Keith. I don't know why we're fighting. We're no, saying we're the reacting. same things. I am I am super excited and super pumped for this weekend. Does Tiger play? We don't know. Who knows? I hope he does. You said he was going to. You keep saying it on Twitter that he's going to. But until he's there, we don't know. And I got into he, a whole thing. He's there. He showed up yesterday. Okay, I, I've showed up before at places and I leave because I'm like, this is stupid. I can't no, win this damn thing. I'm out. You leave, you leave because people ask you to leave, okay? <laughs> He's that. Come on, all right? We went over this last week, all right? We did this back in November. Why, why did he show up yesterday? He showed up yesterday because it's going to rain on Tuesday and Wednesday. You don't even look at the weather. You should read the line, not for nothing, all right? Because uh, it's going to rain think, Tuesday and right. Wednesday. He's right. got a bad leg right he right. doesn't Who's want to slip right. in the rain right. and he's got a bad yes. back Let's he's gonna practice yesterday and monday he'll probably jet somewhere he'll show back up for the dinner on tuesday he'll jet somewhere else he'll be back there on thursday and he'll do top 10 or better on the week book it come on can you calm down can you calm down who's your sleeper of the week who's your sleeper pick for the masters and My then we will get the hell out of here of the week sleeper uh, pick of the week keith read the line read your own uh, line. irish eyes <laughs> All right, is that a song by Peter Gabriel? I don't know what that is. No, it's an, it, I'm alluding to Shane Lowry. Oh, Shane Lowry. Yeah, don't you know. <laughs> All right, there he is, everybody. Keith Stewart from Read the Line ESPN. He's host of the Pro Show, and he's my uh, one of my good friends and co-host here on Stick and Hack Reacts. This is Stick and Hack on Air. Enjoy your day, everybody. Enjoy your week, and we'll see you next Monday reacting to one thing and one thing only. And I swear to God, Keith, if you say to me, hey, here are the topics for Monday, and it's anything outside of the Masters, you and I are done, sir. Enjoy your day, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.